So sometimes we are like this. Struggle to remember what we thought or what somebody we spoke to us two seconds ago. So it's hard to deal with our memories because our memories are failed sometimes. And if there is something that is very annoying, uh, sometimes upset, is to be forgotten. So we forget things, very objects, that's okay. But if we forget someone, we forget days, special days, okay? Sisters, don't stare at your, at your husband now, okay? You didn't forget the special date of your wedding anniversary, so, okay, you're fine. So especially if you forget dates, you forget people, this is very annoying. So today, I'm going to talk about forgotten by men, but remember by don't. Okay, for that, let's, uh, I'm going to read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49. And I'm going to read just a few verses from 14 to 16. And this is a powerful text that reminds us that God never forgets his people. So if you, if you are there, so Isaiah chapter 49, verses 14 to 16. Okay. Good to go. Good. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? And have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your bones are ever before me. Father, I will not forget you. So today we can delve into the comforting, word, comforting words found in Isaiah. As we explore, I'm going to bring some examples from the Bible. People forget, or important things forget, forgotten. And let's try to extract some uh, important lessons. Let me start with forgotten, talk about forgotten dreams. Forgotten dreams. Forgotten dreams. Remember the story of Joseph. Of course, we, we are not here for the sake of time. I cannot go and there for each one of the characters, each one of the stories. But I, I assume that you know, we have time to uh, read. And if you read Genesis 37 to 47, so there's a bunch of big chunk of the Bible telling the story about Joseph. And just remember. That the story of Joseph, a young man with dreams that reached the heavens, sold into slavery by his own brothers. Joseph, Yosef, found himself in prison in Egypt, seemingly abandoned by both family and destiny. But in the midst of the dark dungeon, God remembered him. Joseph's forgotten dreams became the very keys to his divine destiny as he rose from the pit to become a ruler in Egypt. He was the first one just after Pharaoh. Just remember, he was in prison. And he, he, went, he was able to interpret dreams. So he interpreted the dreams of two guys and one of them said, we're going to be restored to your position, just don't forget me here. Don't forget me in this prison. But he was forgotten. So sometimes we are like this. Have you ever felt like your dreams were shattered, left in the ruins of disappointment? Maybe a career you dreamed of. Maybe plans that you have made for families, for investments, or for something, for a course, or to achieve a goal, and you couldn't get there. Perhaps 
hours, you're wrestling with the pain of betrayal, just as Joseph did. But take heart, the God specializes in restorative for broken dreams. Let me tell you again. Take heart, for God specializes in restorative for broken dreams. He is the God who remembers, and His perfect timing. And in his perfect time, he will turn your despair into trouble. So let's think about my second point, forgotten by his own family. Let's think about this young man, another young man in the Bible, David. You can find this story in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. So 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. King David, a man after God's own heart, experienced this thing of familial forgetfulness. He was forgotten by his own family. Anointed as the future king by the prophet Samuel. We were the story. Samuel go, Samuel went to Jesse's house to anoint the new king. Okay? Because God despised Saul, and now he chooses someone according to his heart. And the chosen one was son of Jesse. So, someone went there. Went there, I came to sacrifice, bring your sons, and he brought the sons. First one, the oldest one, and the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. And the prophet said, oh, that's the one. And God said, no, that's not the one. Oh, probably that's the next one. And God said, no, that's not the one. Somewhere I learned something. The man looks to the appearance, but I look to the heart. And after all the signs are gathered together, someone the prophet was like, what's going on here? Those are all the, your sons. And then Jesse was like, um, oh, that is one. The youngest one, but he's standing the sheep, far away from me. So he was forgotten by his own father. Can you imagine this? So someone goes to your house, you have a lot of children, and then this person says, Well, bring me your children, introduce me to them, and then you forgot one of them. What's going on? What kind of father are you are? That's what happened to him. David was forgotten. David was overlooked by his father, Jess, and Samuel sought for one of his sons. Yet, in the divine plan, David was the one chosen to be God's people. Do you find yourself sometimes overlooked and underestimated by those closest to you? Sometimes you feel that way. You expect that the people closest to us will value and recognize our potential. But for some reason, but for some reason, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own time and his own. Matthew 13, 57. Who said that? Jesus. He said that. Because he was preaching and healing people in his hometown and some guy who is that guy? Is that just his son? He kept it. What are you doing? And he said, yes, a prophet is not without one, except in his own time and his own way. Sometimes you feel that. Remember, remember that God sees the heart. David's story reminds us that earthly recognition is not the ultimate validation. It is God's approval that sets the course for our lives. He sees you. He sees you. And His plan
done for you is far greater than any earthly privilege. So don't, don't worry about people recognizing you, giving value to you, who don't need their approval. You just need God's approval. And you provide everything. Let's go for my, my first, uh, third point. Sorry. Let's go for my third point. And this is a sensitive one. Forgotten by Nancy. Here. Let me bring you the story of a man, an invalid man. You can find this story in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. There was a pool near the sheep's gate in Jerusalem. This pool is called Bethsaida or Bethsaida, Bethesda. Could be translated as house of mercy from the Hebrew word. In the crowded shadows of Bethesda pool, we encounter a man invalid for 38 years. Why they are there? Because there was a belief at that time that an angel came down to the pool and troubled the waters sometimes, not very often, but he troubled the waters. And whoever just jumped in the waters, when the waters are very troubled, he's going to be cured, he's going to be healed by whatever he is in God. So that's why a lot of ill people, a lot of sick people, people with infirmities gather around the pool, waiting for the result of waters. Waiting for just one opportunity to be healed. There is our man. Our man is there. We don't know from the text that he was there for 38 years, but we know for sure that he was in Bali for 38 years. Long years. And then Jesus said, I need to go to Bethesda. Why are you going there? You're not sick. That's not a place for healthy people. But yet, in this place of hopelessness, Jesus approached him and asked one question. Do you want to be healed? Seems a bit. <laughs> seems a bit. Uh, cheeky. Do you want to be healed? He asked that. A lot of people there. They remember. A crowd of people. But Jesus went there just for that one. For that one. Remember, God. Sees the heart. And Jesus asked him, Do you want to be here? And then he started knowing, Oh, there is nobody here to help me to jump in the water, the water that trouble, so because uh, I don't have help, nobody help me, and so on, jump in front of me, and he got the blessing for me. And Jesus, again, I know. Wait, 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 focus, focus. Forget the waters, forget the pool. Look at me. Answer my question. Do you want to be healed? The invalid man's response echoes the cry of many hearts today. We may feel abandoned by the promises of medicine or the remedies of this world. We may have suffered after failed treatment the medical engineer. But Jesus, the ultimate healer, is present. He is here today. And he is asking you the same question. This question lingers in the air, inviting us to recognize our need for his transformative work. He is asking you, do you want to be here? Forget that. Forget the ancients. Forget everything. Focus on me. Look at me and answer. Do you want to be healed? He 
even in the depths of physical or emotional infirmity, God's healing power remains unparalleled. The question is, do you want to be healed? Please to back the church. Do you want to be healed in your home? Jesus challenged that man's knowledge is primary thing. His hope was only focused on that last resort. But Jesus told him to focus only on him. Do you want to be healed? Let's go to our fourth point. Forgotten by society. Now another amazing story in the Bible. One of them called Bartimaeus. Forgotten by society. The blind man. Bartimaeus. You can find this story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. As we turn our attention to the blind man, Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside of Jacob, we witness a soul forgotten by society. People don't even care about him. He's there, he's blind, he's begging. He can't get a job. He don't have, he doesn't have all the facilities that we have today. He is just a lost soul. But one day, he was there the same place. One day, he heard a cow's cry. He heard something different. And someone said, maybe he overheard the conversation. Someone said, it's Jesus. Jesus, the prophet, Jesus. The healer, Jesus, is coming. Look, it's Jesus and his disciples, he's coming. And then, and then that moment, I will see the opportunity to try to get the attention of Jesus. The crowd moved him. He started to shout, Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Do you want 
No. What do you want? Of course, Jesus knows. Jesus knows everything. But even now, he wants that you, you, you be able to say something. You need to verbalize what you want. You need to pray to him, talk to him, say, Lord, I need this and this and this. Of course, according to your will, Lord, but I want this, I need this. And then Jesus asked again, what do you want me to do for you? And then the blind said, Lord, I want to see. In a world that often marginalizes and ignores the cries of the needy, take heart, for Jesus hears your every plea. Society's neglect does not equate to God's indifference. Like Bartimaeus, let the Spirit cease in calling on the name of Jesus, the one who sees us in our affliction and responds with compassion. Jesus, son of God, have mercy on us. And let me close by the ultimate example. Forgotten by my God. Forgotten by the world. Who's that? The Catholic. Jesus. The God man. In the grand tapestry of redemption, he reached the pinnacle, Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, rejected by his own, mocked by religious elites, and crucified by the hands of men. Jesus experienced the ultimate abandonment. As he hung on the cross, bearing the weight of our sins, he cried out and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? From an Aramaic, Eli Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Why? Just why? In that moment, the sins of humanity separated Jesus from the Father. He bore the weight of our abandonment so that we might never be truly forsaken. Even in the darkest hour, Jesus' sacrifice paved the way for our reconciliation with God. He endured the ultimate abandonment so that we could find eternal refuge in the arms of our heavenly Forgotten by the world, forgotten the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? My God. Because remember, he was 100% human, 100% God. That moment, 100% human. The agony of that. And Jesus cried out, Why? And he has done everything for you. And remember, in the first verses that we read in Isaiah, said, See, I have you great in my hands. So I can imagine Jesus, the first hands on the cross. They found on his head. He just turned to see his left hand, his right hand, and he could see you there. You are there. Your cross. That cross was not for him, that cross was for you. And even now, he gave his life because he loves you. Beloved, in the pages of your life, there will be moments when you feel forgotten by men, blamed 
slaves may seem shattered, families may overlook you, may have seen <laughs> that you fail, society may turn a blind eye, and even mankind may forsake you. Yet, in those moments, remember, I have raised you from the palms of my hands. In the hands of the Almighty, you are great. Remember and share. Your struggles and sorrows are not in vain. You are not forgotten. Your father, your mother, they forgot. They are not forgotten. His love is unshakable. Grounding you in the assurance that you are precious. Value in hell in the hands that bear the scars of redemption. Embrace this truth. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ.